Um, first email is from Chris. And uh, Chris writes, I sometimes import meshes in order to convert to BRAP and add my modifications. Sometimes I would like to change the origin after having modified the design in order to facilitate printing. For example, rotate the part to sit on a given surface for printing. I do not know the angle, but I have a surface that I want to that I want on the XY plane. Would this be a good tutorial? I don't know, Chris. I think it might be. Let's just jump into uh, to Fusion and uh, and take take a look at it. So um, I'll start out by uh, well, we gotta find something. So uh, my thought was when I looked at some previous videos we've done, uh, we had this sheet metal uh, part here, and I honestly, if we look at the front here, we don't even know what angle. I don't know what angle this is, um, but um, because when I do these, more questions always comes up as I'm doing these. So I thought, let's get this to an STL file because you said that you many times are bringing in uh, STL files. So let's right click up here on the sheet metal component and say save as STL. It's going to come out here uh, and select this body here as an STL. You can choose how many triangles you want. Let's hit OK. And uh, I'm just going to throw it in my downloads folder as body one STL. So now we just took this file Turn it into an SDL file. Just that's what we call uh, round tripping, kind of. So let's bring it back in again. Insert any way you want to bring in a mess file into Fusion. Hit insert and said insert mess. There is that goes back to my downloads folder. That body, uh, and I'm just gonna bring it in like this. So now you will see that it turns pink uh, because now it's not a solid body anymore. It is a mess file. Be aware of that if you go up and click on your name and you go to preferences and you move over to the bottom there's a preview section and you can turn on uh, the mess workspace in here as a um, as an option so if you check that um, then you can get those mess tools if you if you expand the bodies folder see that icon there that shows us that is a mess file if we right click on it and hit edit now suddenly um, the mess tools appear up here. I believe this is mess mixer. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure this is the mess mixer tools. And I'm just showing you this in case that you want to do other manipulations because in here on the modify tool, and I know Chris, I'm kind of like, I'm taking your, your question and I'm turning it into <laughs> to more. Sorry, but in here you will find that there is a lot of cool modifying tools uh, that you can use, including something like plain cut, what could actually be used if you had a big STL file, you wanted to chop it down. So I'm just going to show that because before I was talking about how I wanted to use this face, but now I'm actually have just changed my mind. Um, so the plain cut will take a mess file and will cut it with a plane. And you can use, of course, all these different handles you already are familiar with. So if I'm cutting this, uh, let's do it at 33.59 degrees just because then it's wacky. Now, if you don't, right now, it would actually cut it and it would make it a, it will cut and leave the cuts open. Um, and then when you when you convert it into Fusion as a B-Wrap, like you said you did, then it would actually become a surface, not a solid. But there is a fill option over here. So you can go over here and I would normally do like unified fill hit OK, and that means that uh, the mess wire, uh, workspace cut it in the angle, whatever it was I just selected, and it also um, it also filled them in, right? It kind of it made a flat plane on each of the openings. OK, so what I wanted to show you is that when we're done in here, we can hit, we're done modifying your mess file, we can hit finish mess um, in here, and then um, now I actually want to convert this over to a solid. So I'm kind of getting to, to the portion uh, that, that Chris is talking about, right? So I brought in my mess and now I, I want to turn it into a B-Wrap. The way you do that is you got to get rid of this timeline down here. So you right click up here and you say, do not capture design history. Now remember, if I'm going too fast, if this is brand new to you, you get a little overwhelmed, um, you, can always, you can always rewind back and watch it again. Um, but what we are doing here is we are, we are we we'll stop capturing the design history down here. You'll see this bar down here is going to go away. So I'm going to do that. 
And I'm going to get a warning when I do that. I'm going to lose everything I have in the timeline. But right now it's just this mess body. Uh, so I'm going to say, okay, so that's now when I do this. So that's important to know. When I right click on the mess body, you can now say mess to B wrap. Uh, and that means that you're bringing the mass that is just triangular shells and become a full solid. So I'm going to do that. Hit OK. And now it's a full solid. OK. So now you could, but I probably would do when it's a full solid. I would actually probably go in and turn that history tree back on uh, because I like to capture all that stuff. Now here is uh, to Chris's question. is about um, rotating it and getting it aligned the way you want it. Now, I will say that, say this, say that, and say this, that if you, <laughs> oof, uh, Saturday morning here, if you, um, if you, if, if most uh, 3D printing slicing pieces of software do have this fu function built into it, where it will kind of like make it flat to a plane. But you can do it in Fusion. Um, if I turn the plane on over here, we can kind of see the plane that it, that is laying on, and you might be tempted to uh, to go in and start playing with the move copy tool. And there might be some way you could fiddle around with this. But what I would do, I think the easiest thing to do is actually just turn it in to a component itself, because then I can use the joint tool. So I'm going to right click on the body and say create component from body. Now we up this component. Now when it's a component it now can flow around in space. And then the easiest thing to do is actually just go up and click the joint tool. I'm just going to spin it around. And then you can you get this coin and I can snap it to whatever corner I want. And by the way, if you hold down control, it will it will stick to whatever face you have highlighted. So I'm going to select this corner here, left click once. And then I can go down and just click on the origin down here, make sure it's flat to whatever whatever plane I want. So let's say we want it flat to this plane here. Um, we can go ahead and place it on that. No. Oh, I didn't know that. I can't select. Um, I can only select it in. I can only select it in the Z direction. What is actually what I want? Um, I thought I would get more options. Okay, so in the Z direction, what is probably what you want anyways, you can snap it into there and then it will fall into place and you can flip the direction like like that. Now, if you wanted it to, what I was looking for was actually be able to select some of the other planes. Now it's flat to this face. Now you could go in, click on the, um, the move tool and you could snap it into to one of these and then you would get uh, 90 degrees, so we could get it to 90 degrees to that face in front of that. All right, uh, but using turning it into a component and using it as a, the joint will let you make that face or whatever face you have, right? Like if I just undo it again, um, if we wanted to place it in some other, if we wanted that face that I originally thought about, click the joint tool. Um, and, uh, and we could select any of these faces as that coin and align that with, uh, with the Z down and then it will be flat to, to that face. Chris, I hope, I hope that was useful. Uh, quick little trip uh, in and out of meshes and into solids and things like that. All right, let's, um, let's jump to the next one. I'm gonna have to jump a little bit in my list here.